Apparently pirates have overthrown Cinderella's kingdom and have commenced with the traditional Friday Night Fireworks show. Should we send them for 46 seconds of logos at this point? Ah, why the f*** not? <gasps> How long is that f underwater anyway? And what luck! Two random fishermen come along and catch him in their net. If they hadn't come by when they did, he probably only would have had another 24 hours underwater before he died. Not to be confused with Cadiz, Kentucky. Wait, there is a Cadiz, Kentucky? Well, f Your Majesty, got him up in a fishing net. If you caught him in a fishing net, explain why you're wetter than he is. No, I told you. Ponce de Leon died 200 years ago. Expositional arguing. The Fountain of Youth. Why is the name of this movie on Stranger Tides and not The Fountain of Youth? In case you confused it with London Fletcher. I guess the movie expects this shot of money changing hands to explain away the fact that Jack Sparrow is currently posing as a judge, but a lot more information is needed for this to make any sense. Did Jack arrive in London with gobs of cash to pay off all the guards and all the lawyers that would presumably be an obstacle for posing as a judge? Wouldn't there be at least one incorruptible person who would keep Jack from posing as a judge? And on top of all that, how does no one recognize that he doesn't remotely sound or look like the actual judge? The evidence Foreman. you're finding. Guilty verdict means he'll hang. Does the foreman just get to unilaterally decide the verdict without any deliberation with the jury? Also, why does a jury even exist in this trial? It should be arranged to transport this prisoner to the Tower of London. If Jack had enough cash on him to pay off all these people so he could be a judge, why didn't he just pay people off so he and Gibbs could escape without all the fanfare? Last I heard, you were hell-bent to find the Fountain of Youth. You mean the object of sailor folklore the two sailors from the previous scene made a significant discovery about? How convenient. How did this double cross take place? Did this driver go to somebody in the British government and say, hey, Jack Sparrow's going to make a daring escape with his buddy Gibbs, but if you pay me more money than he did, I'll deliver him to you instead. Why not just pay the driver money for the information and stop Jack Sparrow before he makes the escape? Movie wastes time on Jack trying to eat a pastry while being chained to a gold chair. Some bull Someone please remove these infernal chains! You can persuade your captors to remove your chains if you're annoying enough. And also, even though they know the legend of Jack Sparrow, they've never heard about his many, many escapes. A Catholic! That's racist. You do know the way to the fountain. You could guide an expedition. I still want him to guide the expedition, even though he lost the map and he's a pirate. And a captain. Why put Barbosa in the room when you can dramatically reveal him? Also, Barbosa could have cleared up this is this the real Jack Sparrow argument within seconds, but we had to sit through two minutes of that nonsense anyway. Barbosa's qualifications for being the captain of the king's ship are communication skills, previous sailing experience, and being in all the other movies. Hail and be rewarded with the high station you so desire. I can't tell if this overacting is getting worse as the scene progresses or if I'm just getting more annoyed by it. Jack is not immediately shot right after tapping both these guards in the nuts. Also, escaping via nut tap. And then the king's guard is thwarted by a plate of pastries. <laughs> You! Movie! Who choreographed this escape? Rube Goldberg? This guard has a gun, but still opts for a brisk run down the stairs instead of shooting. Also, I realize we can't see Jack, but why couldn't they see Jack? He's hiding behind the table if you're facing the table, but if you're running towards the left side, Jack is just crouching behind it in plain view. I'm honestly surprised Rob Marshall didn't just walk in and hand Jack a sword and a gun. This electrical outlet, and this electrical outlet, and this HVAC vent! Okay, a few things. It takes Jack absolutely no time to get to this position. This rope designed to hold these banners of fabric is not only holding up a 175 pound man, but it's not even tightening with the additional weight. Also, no one down below sees Jack and alerts the guards who are searching for him. Does late 17th century London have a strict no snitching policy I'm unaware of? This tassel conveniently breaks at the very last second, so we can continue this cartoonish chase scene that will inevitably end with Jack getting away. Fantastic plan! Let's cut the rope so he can swing down to his escape, so the guards can chase him in the street instead of standing under him in the street so he has nowhere to go. I'm gonna rename Jack Sparrow Tony Jock Sparrow. Aw oh, man, they dragged Dame Judy Dench into this, didn't they? Is that it? Why get on the top of this carriage where you can be seen? Should've just stayed in the carriage and f Judy Dench. God damn it, why would he do this? That cart is headed towards the redcoats that are chasing him. Also, the guards are suddenly thousands of dick lengths away from Jack, when they were mere vagina lengths away a second ago. These two men need each other's help to carry a f***ing board. Also, if that's the case, they would not be able to hold Jack's weight, which they are currently ignoring now. This seems like a huge obstacle for the guards to overcome, but when we next see them, there's almost no fire and they're still on Jack's tail. But quite honestly, the movie can't seem to figure out where these guards are at any given moment, so the movie is perfectly content lying to us. No one sees the man obviously hanging from the prancing pony sign. Jack's dad is just hiding out near the captain's daughter, waiting to ex a Jack out of a tough situation. I mean, how long was he waiting over there just in case this happened? I heard you're putting together a crew. Everyone in London knows Jack Sparrow is putting together a crew except for Jack Sparrow, who was too busy raising funds to bribe the entire British judicial system to keep up with pirate gossip. Those folk over there, they have a ship. 
You mean we don't have to leave our current location to get exactly what we need at this exact moment? Also, kind of hard to believe with all the information the King had about Jack Sparrow being in London that they never heard of the Captain's Daughter Tavern and the person recruiting sailors here. Jack's dad is Batman. Somehow the room is lit in such a way that it hides the imposter Jack Sparrow's face. It's probably why nobody who interviewed for the job noticed he looked like Penelope Cruz. When someone decides to run to a place where mere boards prevent them from falling, I consider the sword fight to be done until that person decides to walk away from it. Why even bother chasing this person? Why is every rope anyone in this franchise grabs onto strong enough and positioned in such a way it allows them to swing to their desired destination? Only one person alive knows that move. Jack is so confident in this statement, he forces this mystery person to kiss him. Also, I'm fairly confident that more than one person in the world knows how to spin around with a sword. You were the only pirate I thought I would pass for. Voice and everything? How'd you pull that off? Notice how we never heard her Jack Sparrow impersonation. I don't want to question this action because part of me approves of it, but the other part of me feels compelled to question it because it has no purpose other than revealing her cleavage. Which, again, I am for. So, like her blouse, I am torn. I could use a ship. If we cut out all the moments where someone tells Jack that he's looking for the Fountain of Youth, and all the times Jack says he could use a ship, we'd probably shave a solid ten minutes off this picture. I was ready to take my vows. And you? What were you doing in a Spanish convent anyway? Chase position. More than just three redcoats came running in here, right? So what are the other guys doing? Waiting to be tapped in? Just running around the room aimlessly? We are at a disadvantage. It's this kind of thoughtful, nuanced writing that really makes this series shine. Movie perpetuates the myth that puncturing a barrel with alcoholic liquid will cause it to spew like a geyser. When we arrived at this bar, there was no indication that they were near any significant body of water. It's almost as if the environment evolves in real time based on what the plot requires of it. It's almost like these guards are saying, well, they're clearly gone forever. No need to continue in our pursuit. Okay, now where the f*** are we? It's been 20 seconds since they fell through the trap door, and now we're in a completely different location. Forcing a man to twist his old hanging rope, you must lie in your bed the way you made it. So he doesn't have to tie the noose? Why the f*** was that bit of dialogue even necessary? The map doesn't burn up immediately, so why not try and put the fire out, salvage what's there, and kill Gibbs? Is it because he pulls well in the focus groups? Is Disney trying to ensure kids never learn how to read a map? I'm no seaman, but I can't imagine the sails with giant holes in them would be super effective. Uh, first mate is a uh, huh? Yeah, about that, why was Penelope Cruz pretending to be Jack Sparrow to recruit sailors when she's the first mate on Blackbeard's ship? Does Blackbeard have such a bad reputation that he couldn't recruit anybody on his own? Or did this movie just really need some mysterious someone is impersonating Jack Sparrow nonsense to get Jack on in this adventure? Blackbeard will meet his death within a fortnight at the hands of a one-legged man. That's why he needs the fountain, Jack. Yeah, but why would finding the fountain prevent the one-legged man from killing him? As we find out, the fountain only works by taking the total years lived from one person and adding them to another person, not makes you impenetrable to stab wounds. Although, as we'll soon find out, this movie doesn't know what the fountain ritual actually does anyway. So ultimately, the answer we're looking for is f*** this movie. Perhaps you'd be so kind as to provide us an headache. Wait, you mean just now? After sailing this long? Here are the Spaniards, who should have a huge head start on all the other expeditions. They have Ponce de Leon's book and everything, but here they are, neck and neck with the others. Be we on the proper course, Gibbs. Aye, it be proper. There's your proof. So now we kill Gibbs and follow the Spaniards? He never so much as turned his head. Maybe this is why they keep Gibbs around. His vision is so impeccable he can see what a normal man needs a telescope to see. I signed up to sail under Jack Sparrow, not some pretender. And a lady at that. Why doesn't she just keep up the Jack Sparrow routine so these idiots don't mutiny on her for being an imposter? Is it because it wouldn't be sexy enough? I'll call them. All of them. Really? All of them? There are only six swords on this whole ship? Also, considering that they just started talking about mutiny, what was the conversation like before this kid left? Okay, we're going to talk about mutiny, so we'll need swords. All right, let's send the child. You have been monstrously deceived. We are deceptive then. Yes. Even Jack is getting irritated with the repetitive dialogue. Instead of choreographing some real action and fighting, movie decides to just cut, 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 cut itself to death to create the illusion that these actors can actually sword fight. If Blackbeard has rope telekinesis, then why even bother having a crew? Can't he just stand on deck and command the ropes to do his bidding? Still I pray for every unfortunate soul on this hellbound vessel. Oh, come on, Florida's not that bad. Oh, this guy attended the Prometheus School of Rowing Away From Things. Also, Blackbeard wasted a ton of flammable accelerant to kill this one crewman. AGAIN! God damn it! Trident carving produces no blood because the spirits of voodoo are aware of the rating this movie was shooting for. You will lead us to the fountain. So did Angelica pretend to be Jack to lure Jack onto the ship somehow? Or were they planning on making this trip without Jack? 
Because remember, the only reason Angelica dressed up as Jack was because she felt like he was the only pirate she could make believable. There's a whole lot missing from this backstory, and none of the explanations are good. The director said, we'll have your character eat sliced apples. It'll make you look like even more of an asshole. Mermaid! Dreadful in hunger of a flesh of man. Character in movie begins explaining things to other characters in the movie that they surely already know. So it was about time this movie got back to its roots. And I'll tell you the ritual of the fountain. Why does she know the ritual? Is it just an essential thing she's tasked with knowing so the viewing audience can rest assured she'll be here for most of the movie? Water from the fountain of youth. The shimmering tear of a mermaid. The silver chalices of Ponce de Leon. I thought the Fountain of Youth was supposed to be a naturally occurring magical body of water. So how did Ponce de Leon figure out he needed a tear from a mermaid and silver chalices that he himself owned to make it work? The f***ing f***. Also, the movie pretty much rips off Indiana Jones on the Last Crusade, because why not? With these items, you may take all the years of life from another. If that's the case, then the fountain's name is incredibly misleading. Why don't we change it to the fountain of someone else's life? Is the movie gonna explain how the Black Pearl... You know what? F*** it. Can we just please get to the f***ing fountain without going down all these rabbit holes? I am truly the daughter of Blackbeard. Why did you lie about lying about being his daughter, then? What purpose did that serve? They be drawn to man-made light. Sharks! Has this jackass kid not been paying attention? All they've been talking about since they got here are mermaids. Worse than sharks, boy. Both sharks and mermaids will try to eat you, but mermaids are hot and topless. They like to wear singing. You can find this on page 47 of the non-fictional text, How to F*** a Mermaid in 10 Days. Mermaids start using an attack they could have used a lot sooner than this. Also, spider-maids. Jack somehow knew that mermaids would be scared of this explosion. Mermaids have breasts, but they don't have nipples because their genetics are compliant with the movie's PG-13 rating. Ever walk on the beach, look back and see your footsteps in the sand? If he says something about seeing a second set of footprints, I'm turning this shit off. Mermaids attack Barbosa's ship, but seem completely disinterested in the assholes who are already on land, which is a severe departure from what they did last night with Blackbeard's crew. Did they run out of spider webs? Also, why did they wait to attack the ship after all the main characters of this movie got to land? Oh. Now that Barbosa's ship is being sunk, how the f*** are they going to get to the next place? Or is this movie saying that White Cat Bay is the final destination, and they can walk the rest of the way? Furthermore, where are these assholes now? If it's raining on White Cap Bay and Barbosa can walk to the next place, then where did Blackbeard go where it's totally sunny? Why is it we've got to bring her along? Because tears don't keep. We need them fresh. And we also need to develop a love story between the mermaid and the Philip. Also, is this movie f***ing joking? This ritual requires fresh tears. Seriously? Who made up these rules? Do we really want to be young that badly? What is the ritual again? Water from the fountain and a mermaid's tear? And two silver chalices. One cup with a tear, one without. I'm beginning to think this movie was written by people who made those puzzle adventure games where you have to do some really convoluted shit just to advance, with no clues and no explanation. But to Ponce de Leon, the answer was clear as day. Mermaid, tears, and chalices. I hear Ponce de Leon was also a huge Zork fan. Also, which came first, the Fountain of Youth or Ponce de Leon? Sounds like he's the one who made the rules, but isn't he famous for looking for the fountain? So how did he come up with all this? And if it wasn't him, then how did God come up with all this? Quite complicated, is it not? If you write this kind of dialogue for your main character, that might be a hint you're in need of a second draft. She needs air! Philip is not just a clergyman, he's also a mermaid expert. You get to choose, Mr. Sparrow. Oh. Even though Blackbeard is... I'm running out of time. He still has time for Russian roulette. <laughs> if the voodoo doll gives Jack the sensation of falling, then why doesn't he start drowning when the doll hits water? Dare not let it touch your skin. You'd think with the amount of money these movies continue to make, they could splurge on some better animal CGI. How much do they have to earmark for Depp's wine, exactly? Well, of course she grows legs if she's not in water. Maybe that's why she never speaks. She sold her voice to an octopus drag queen lady, so she could have legs when she's on land. You are different. Right! He's young and attractive. Mermaids only eat dirty old pirates. What was clear as day a few minutes ago is now dark and foggy, as if this island changes the weather based on whatever a movie needs at a given moment. So how the f*** did Ponce de Leon's boat end up on this cliff? Was it placed there by the screenwriter to set up a precarious moment that will soon happen? Ponce de Leon. Ponce de Leon is buried in Puerto Rico, so I don't think he's on the right ship. Back, back! We have to balance it out! Further proof that there is no reason for this ship to still be sitting here after 200 years. Also, how was Barbosa able to sneak onto this boat without causing balance issues if that boat's balance is so precarious? And why was Jack able to do the same without causing any issues until they started sword fighting? The Spanish. They're ahead of us, mate. Well, no sh Their voyage wasn't filled with pointless hijinks and shenanigans. Ponce either programmed his dead body to be protective of the map for some reason, or he's still alive from drinking from the fountain water and mermaid tears. Problem is, we find out later that the fountain heals scars, so why would your body deteriorate, and why would you waste your time guarding a map in this condition? 
Also, I think the two of you could probably win a fight with the weird skeleton puppet. You will not torture! Philip feels undying love for the mermaid that he's only known for a day, which just proves that love at first sight is real, as long as you're incredibly hot. Also, can we all agree that no one gives a shit about this priest-mermaid love story that begins two-thirds of the way through this movie? Just a scratch, you're a dead man in minutes. So Barbosa keeps his super deadly sword drawn, dramatically raising the risk that he could accidentally stab himself, not to mention giving Jack a reason to ask about it, so we'll know about the frog poison. Now what? Is Barbosa directing this question to Jack or the director? Came for me. I... You're different. In that you're not a gross middle-aged pirate man, nor are you Angelica, who clearly has a thing going with Jack. Process of elimination love is still love. Tears of joy. They say these be the more potent anyway. Where are you getting this information? How many conversations about mermaid tears are you having with your colleagues? Is there a book to consult? The Spaniards tie up Jack and Barbosa to trees that are so far away they are in perfect escaping range. Also, why did Barbosa have to go along with this Fountain of Youth thing just to get back at Blackbeard? I'm sure there were ways much simpler than infiltrating the British Navy to find the magical fountain that Blackbeard is also looking for. In order to free himself from the ropes, Jack is going to climb this entire palm tree, somehow get over the top of the palm tree, and I guess slide back down the tree like a fireman, or find some way to cartoonishly bend the tree down. You can't just have him emerge from the leaves completely free. How did he get over those leaves? Is it a magical rope that can pass through leaves? How many magical ropes are in this movie? Movie did in fact go for some cartoonish tree bending. Jack, through the power of editing, makes it past all these guards using only a rope and manages to tie them all to a tree because art imitates life and life is stupid. Jack and Gibbs went through the trouble of catching a pig so they could tie the chalices to it and make it run away if Blackbeard didn't meet their demands. Seems like there would be an easier way to do this, but I'm not making a movie to fund my future Star Wars acquisition. Thankfully, Jack noticed this drop of water so that he could eventually look through it, while at the same time looking directly at the X that marks the spot. So why was that single drop of water falling up when this giant pool of water behaves like a normal pool of water? Was that just an indicator drop that they are headed in the right direction? Aqua de vida. You have to say these words because obviously after getting mermaid tears, locating chalices, and actually finding the location of the Fountain of Youth in the first place, you clearly haven't done enough. Kill them all! <laughs> these people somehow hear Jack over all the noise, and all of them are stopped by what Jack has to say. And it over. Is that tear still fresh? I will not have that smile on your face as I strike you down. Blackbeard's in a tough spot. On one hand, if he doesn't kill Barbosa, then Barbosa's gonna kill him. On the other hand, if he does kill Barbosa, that means the stupid-ass prophecy is wrong. And that will f*** up my whole world if a prophecy in a movie is wrong again. Only God can grant eternal life, not this pagan water. If the Spaniards came out simply to destroy the Fountain of Youth, then why didn't they just go ahead and do that? They had a tremendous lead on everyone getting to this island, and they knew the others were coming for it. Furthermore, couldn't they simply just destroy the chalices and call it a day, since you need to do all sorts of petty sh** to make the Fountain of Youth work anyway? Looks like the Spanish Inquisition went to the lowest lane school of disposing of things. Destroy this profane temple! If he really thinks that all this is bullsh** paganism, how does he explain the floating water? First off, there's apparently a mermaid route to the Fountain of Youth. Second off, why did Serena use her freedom to swim toward the fountain for any reason? I mean, maybe she thought she could save the heartthrob from Hunger Games catching fire. But she just gives the chalices to Jack and pieces out, so her appearance here smells terribly of Ex Machina and Tuna. Again, I've gotta ask, why does this work? The rules have been stated clearly. The fountain adds years to your life, but there's never any explanation about healing, existing scars, or death blows. I think this movie is so Last Crusade, it forgot what the power of this water really is. I mean, she totally eats him, right? This is not over! <laughs> Any idea how to get her out? We shall need a crossbow, an hourglass, three goats. One of us must learn to play the trumpet whilst the other one goes like this. Maybe this movie is making fun of itself, but this is no sillier than what we just watched, and just as tedious. A heaping load of bullshit washes up on the island where Angelica is stranded. How in the world did bull travel this far? And again I ask, how did Jack not drown? Please, there's still hope. Again! Hard, you motherfucker! You made your point! Let him pull back! Who are you? We're extremely hot chicks with large breasts. This drink, I like it. I know, it's great, right? Another! <laughs> I regret nothing! This land is hereby forever claimed in the glorious name of His Majesty, King George! <laughs> Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition! <laughs> Steady as she goes. Steady as she goes.